people still ignore your emails, even if you say please. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever in the world you may be. I've had a lot of new subscribers in the last few weeks, so welcome to my channel. I talk about kind of like career stuff, personal finance. I'm gonna start doing a little segment on kind of small business finance as well, and some fashiony bits because I like to buy clothes. So in the last couple of weeks, I caught myself feeling quite confident, efficient, and generally quite in control of myself at work. And I then immediately realized there's a couple of reasons why. It's all to do with a lot of self-development, like books that I've been reading recently, a lot of which you'll have heard of and a lot of which have also led to a lot of the personal finance videos I've been putting out recently. But since a lot of them have helped me at quite a junior level in my corporate job, I really wanted to share them because I think it would have been really useful to know these things before I even started. And hopefully I can help anyone out there who's about to start their first corporate job in September or next year or if you're applying for your first job. I've had a lot of part-time jobs before this one so this is essentially my first like big girl job so that's why I was never really exposed to any of this kind of stuff but yeah let's just hop right into the video. So the first point is to do with kind of imposter syndrome. And I definitely want to expand on this in a whole another video because it's a huge topic and there's so much stuff you can do to combat it and kind of develop from it. But imposter syndrome is like a huge thing and people feel it at all levels of their roles. People in really senior positions feel it, which in itself should kind of help you in trying to deter imposter syndrome. And I always heard the advice that you should mitigate imposter syndrome by faking it so pretending that you know it doesn't exist telling yourself that you know you do deserve the role you're in you're capable you're competent you know you're confident you just fake it till you eventually make it but I've started to realize that the more time you spend kind of faking it the more you're kind of lying to yourself so what I think has helped me try and kind of combat imposter syndrome and I'm not saying this is like completely eradicated now but it definitely helps to pinpoint and like write down what exactly is making me feel like an imposter at a certain point in time. So for example, when I'm in client meetings and I'm speaking about something and I'll have that little voice in my head that's telling me, you know, you're too junior to be talking about this. You're too junior to speak up. You're too junior to give like any kind of feedback. And I'll actually write down what that little voice is saying and then actually write down the reasons why that voice is just completely not right. Basically just using logic to combat the illogical thoughts that you're having and that's kind of what I've been doing personally to combat this in the workplace now and I know I'm gonna face kind of heavier feelings of imposter syndrome as I progress through my career but right now this tip is really really helping me out and I really recommend if you're feeling it to do that kind of just write down exactly what that little voice is telling you and then use logic to just like squash it. The second one is another thing I have learned in the last, only in the last, I think, six to eight months or so. I've changed the language that I use in emails completely. And there's actually loads of information out about this now in the kind of realm of Instagram and TikTok and business TikTok, which by the way is like so cool. But basically the language you would use in like written communication can sometimes convey to the person you're speaking to that you're not confident in yourself, that you're not confident in what you're saying and you're not confident like, in the in information that you're providing to whoever you're emailing. So the phrases, and I'm sure you will have heard of them by now, the phrases are just, please, and possibly. And I literally used these in every single email just because I had an irrational fear of coming across as really blunt and impolite. And I always thought, Right, if I'm really polite to this person via email, they'll do exactly what I want, send me exactly what I want, when I want it. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, so just... People will still ignore your emails. Even if you say please. I mean, it's shocking, but it's the truth. I also don't put any exclamation marks. Ever. <laughs> I used to do that all the time as well, and now I just don't. People would have been able to read an email, not known my position in the firm and 
immediately have been able to tell just by the phrases I was using and my use of exclamation marks. And this should definitely be in like training or something when you join firms. And I'm gonna give you some rectifications for these words as well, because I'm not gonna tell you to just stop using them and just leave you, leave you out there without any help. So instead of just, you say want, instead of please, you just don't say please, and instead of possibly, you just don't say possibly. You basically want to try and come off as blunt as possible in an email because no one really cares about politeness. I mean, the only real way you can be impolite is when you're outright rude and no one's really doing that unless you're actually, you know, just being rude. You'll have a better online presence and you will actually just end up getting what you want more than half the time. Another thing I wish someone told me about when I joined is that you don't have to join as many kind of extracurricular things as possible. You have to kind of basically take your passions and pursue them through extracurricular societies, networks, groups, things like that. And how I've learned this point is by trying to do as much as I can with my time while I work instead of just pursuing something that highlights something I'm passionate about or something I want to explore later in my career. For example, if you really enjoy writing in your free time, getting involved with a kind of newsletter in your department because then your extracurricular activities kind of complement your main you know chunk of your nine to five instead of having to do multiple things that you don't you're not necessarily interested in just for the sake of doing extracurricular activities so another thing which i think is it's the fourth thing is to try and work as if you've already been promoted and i don't mean this in the sense of get complacent and get really comfortable with your day job but i mean if you currently have the role of level a try and work to level a slash b or b or b slash c so try and constantly kind of take note of what your what your seniors are doing what your line managers are doing and basically try and replicate that in your day to day or try and find out a bit more about what they're doing so that you can kind of prepare yourself for that next level of working. And I guess this is a bit more specific to my role at the big four because there are certain like seniority levels. There's a kind of linear progression, but it's really easy to get comfortable in your kind of day-to-day -day work and not continue to improve. And I think that point does apply to a lot of different jobs, especially if you're looking to keep getting promoted, keep upgrading your work and keep improving and impressing your managers. You should definitely be taking note of how your seniors are working and actively be trying to work one level ahead all the time. It can seem a little bit stressful, so maybe not necessarily every single day, but definitely take an active interest in doing so. The fifth and final thing is actually to do with networking and I've learned a lot about networking and learned to appreciate networks from the book Act Like a Leader, Think Like a Leader and I spent the longest time thinking that networks were this kind of like horrible thing where it was kind of like I scratch your back, you scratch mine and you're only kind of friends if you can kind of provide something for that person and they can provide something for you and it was a kind of superficial relationship but the book really teaches you a lot about what networks actually mean and the fact that professional networks aren't really that different from friendships which are essentially just personal networks and the fact that when you're quite junior in your role like I am, that doesn't mean that networks aren't for me yet because networks are kind of two-way relationship. You are kind of there to either learn, if it was a mentorship, to learn from that other person and give back. And you have plenty to give as a person quite early in your career. I mean, the most common thing is that you have a entirely new perspective on career, on life and work. Because think about it, when decisions are being made in an executive boardroom, who's not there? It's the junior staff. Their perspectives are never really taken into account. So definitely don't discount yourself from being able to network with people, find mentors, try and understand that your career is completely an open playing field. It's not a kind of tunnel from A to B and you'll only really know about these things from speaking to other professionals, people in other industries, people in other stages of their career, and what comes from getting to know those people is opportunities, and they may be small or big, but that's how networks kind of work. It's not you're connected to this person solely for this one objective, 
and once you get that one objective you have to give something back it doesn't really work like that i would really highly recommend reading the book act like a leader think like a leader because the author does a lot of interviews with different kinds of people and the different perspectives that you get from different manager levels from people at different levels in their career it's quite interesting and it really does open your eyes to what you could potentially be missing out by avoiding networks and that brings me to the end of this week's video but I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope that you're excited to start your new job if you are starting. I hope that some of this advice is kind of relatable and useful and I really hope that you guys take it on board because as I said at the beginning of the video, I really wish someone had just sat me down and just kind of told me little snippets of their life a couple of years into the job. It would have been really useful to know. But yeah, if you're starting a new job soon or you're applying, I wish you the best of luck and I guess I will see you guys next week. Bye.